Hi, in this video, we'll be discussing a question on binomial theorem and its general term. In A part 1 of this question, the 9th term in the expansion of open bracket px minus q over x close bracket to the power of n, where p and q are constants, is independent of x. Find the value of n, and that's a 3 marks question. In A part 2 of the same question, show that the 9th term is a positive number, and that's a 1 mark question. In a separate B question, for B part 1, write down and simplify the first 3 terms in the expansion of open bracket 2 minus x over 4 close bracket to the power of n, where n is a positive integer greater than 2 in ascending powers of x, and that's a 2 marks question. In the same part B, in B part 2, the first two non-zero terms in the expansion in ascending powers of x of open bracket 2 plus x close brackets open bracket 2 minus x over 4 close bracket to the power of n are a plus bx squared, where a and b are constants. You are to find the values of n, of a, and of b, and that's a 4 marks question. You might want to pause this video to give this question a try. And when you're ready, keep watching. In A part 1 of this question, we are told that the 9th term in this binomial expansion is independent of x. So by the 9th term refers to term 9. And for term 9, it means we need to find a specific term within this binomial expansion. A specific term can be found by using a general term formula within the binomial expansion of a plus b to the power of n. So any term can be written as a term r plus 1 to be equals to ncr a to the power of n minus r b to the power of r. So with that in mind, we can start our a part 1 solution. So in step 1, term 9 can be rewritten as a term 8 plus 1. In this case, your r, we can tell that it is an 8. So ncr now refers to nc8. And CR over here now refers to NC8. A to the power of N minus R now refers to PX to the power of N minus 8. And B to the power of R now refers to negative QX to the power of minus 1 close bracket to the power of 8 because R is an 8. So what happens for this green color portion is that the negative Q over X can be rewritten as a negative QX to the power of minus 1 using the negative indices rule. So with this, we can continue to the next step. When the question says independent of x, it refers to the term that consists of x to the power of 0. Because x to the power of 0 is a 1, and by that it is a constant. So when it says term independent of x, in this case, we set the equation to be x to the power of 0 to be the same as the basis of x in this general term. So what we're going to do now is to extract the basis of x in this case. So x to the power of n minus 8 multiplied by x to the power of minus 1 times 8. So combining the basis of x in this case will actually give us x to the power of 0 to be equal to x to the power of n minus 8 minus 8. Same base multiply, power x using one of the product rule of indices. So the same base of x on the left and on the right, the power on the left will therefore be equal to the power on the right. So 0 will now be equal to n minus 16. Solving for n will actually give us a 16. And that's the answer for a part 1. With n to be 16, we can proceed to our a part 2, whereby we are to show that the 9th term is a positive number. In order to, for us to find the 9th term, whether it is a positive number or not, we need to first find out what exactly is term 9. So in order for us to find what exactly is term 9, we need to replace all the n to be a 16, in this case. So replacing n to be a 16, that is our a part 2 first step. Replacing n to be a 16, so Term 8 plus 1 is therefore equal to 16C8 Px to the power of 16 minus 8, negative Qx to the power of minus 1, close bracket to the power of 8. Now, as you can see here, this term here does not consist of any axis at all. The axis of x to the power of 8 over here, multiplied by x to the power of negative 8, is actually cancelled off because this term is actually independent of x. So, keying the calculator of 16C8 will give us a 12870 p to the power of 8 and over here open brackets negative q close bracket to the power of 8. So when we have this in mind, 
a bracket negative q to the power of 8 will give us a q to the power of 8 because the power is actually evens and even power will remove all negatives so we writing this out we can give us a 1 2 8 7 0 bracket pq close bracket to the power of 8 we will now need to analyze this term in this case whether the term 9 is a positive number in this case let's continue with the next step since pq has an even power of 8 and pq is not equal to 0 because if pq is equal to 0 there will not be any binomial expansion to begin with because the whole thing will therefore be a 0 so pq has an even power of 8 so when pq has an even power of 8 it actually removes all negatives because the power is even and pq is not equal to 0 that means to say that pq to the power of 8 will definitely be greater than 0 it will not even be equal to 0 or negative it will be greater than 0 multiplying this to a 1 2 8 7 0 the whole of term 9 will therefore be greater than 0 therefore we can conclude this case term 9 is a positive number and that's the answer for a part 2. in b part 1 of this questions we are told to write down and simplify the first three terms in the expansion of 2 minus x over 4 to the power of n in ascending powers of x. Now before we do this binomial expansions, let us recap on our binomial theorem of a plus b to the power of n. If we expand out a plus b to the power of n, it will give us term 1 to be a to the power of n, term 2 to be nc1 a to the power of n minus 1, b to the power of 1. Term 3 will be nc2 a to the power of n minus 2 b to the power of 2. And for term 4 onwards, we represent it by a plus triple dot here, indicating a series of terms from here onwards. So with our binomial theorem in place, we can start to do our expansion. So over here, a plus b to the power of n now is written in the form of 2 minus x over 4 to the power of n. Now for your easy referencing, my a is highlighted in yellow and my b is highlighted in green so they can refer to the formulas on the left side in the red box so the first term of a to the power of n now is a 2 to the power of n the second term of n c1 a to the power of n minus 1 now is a 2 to the power of n minus 1 b to the power of 1 now is a negative x over 4 to the power of 1 plus n c2 a to the power of n minus 2 now refers to 2 to the power of n minus 2 and b to the power of 2 now is a term of negative x over 4 to the power of 2. Take note to put in the negative together with your b like this. So um, plus a triple dot indicating a series of terms from here onwards. So with this in mind, we can know that this is an nc1 and an nc2. Now under normal circumstances, if our n is a known, which is for instance a 5, we can key our calculator for instance 5c1, 5c2. But over here, nc1, nc2, it means that n is an unknown, so it's simply not possible to key the calculator. We need to use another formula, in this case, also known as binomial coefficient. So for binomial coefficient, whereby we have it as ncr or n choose r, is written to be the form of n factorial in the numerator, in the denominator, n minus r factorial times an r factorial. So applying the binomial coefficient and writing out the next step, we will have this here. So 2 to the power of n, the first term remains. For the term 2, nc1 can be written as n factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial times 1 factorial. Your 2 to the power of n minus 1 in the previous step actually remains. Negative x over 4 highlighted in green here is now a negative x because the divided by 4 here, divided by 4, can be written and combined with a 2 to the power of negative 2 like this. nc2 can be re rewritten as a form of n factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial times the 2 factorial using the binomial coefficients. Once again, the 2 to the power of n minus 2 remains. But over here, the one highlighted in green, negative x squared over 4 can now be written as an x squared because the square part will remove the negatives. The square will remove all negatives in this case. So we have an x squared. 4 squared at the bottom is known to be a 16. It's also the same as 2 to the power of 4. So 4 squared refers to 16, refers to 2 to the power of 4 because it appears in the denominator. I want to combine with this base of 2. So divided by 16 now is a 2 to the power of negative 4 like this. 
So once we have this, we might want to revisit on the part of factorial in order for us to do a further expansion or simplifying of this. So a factorial on the left will mean that n factorial can be written as n times n minus 1 factorial or it can expand as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times all the way until it reaches a 1. So we can stop the factorial as and when as we like it. So the idea is to stop at the factorial at the bottom so that we can cancel it off. If not, there is simply no other way we can cancel this off. So expanding the factorial, in this case, we have this part. So the first term of 2 to the power n remains. The one highlighted in blue is now the one in this case, in, in this parenthesis here. So n factorial can be expanded as a n times n minus 1 factorial like this. So why do I stop at n minus 1 factorial at the top? It's because I can cancel away the n minus 1 factorial at the bottom. 1 factorial over here in the previous step is the same as 1. So the 2 to the power of n minus 3 remains. Negative x remains. So in term 3, you have an n factorial on top. Now I'll need to expand it all the way until I have an n minus 2 factorial so that I can cancel away the n minus 2 factorial at the bottom. So n factorial can be expanded into n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial so that we can cancel away the n minus 2 factorial at the bottom. And um, 2 to the power of n minus 6 will remain actually. So over here, there is an x squared remains. So what happens to this additional 2 to the power of negative 1 here? Where did it come from? Because 2 factorial is the same as 2 times 1. If we divide it by 2, we can combine with this base of 2. So to give us a 2 to the power of minus 1. So divide by 2 means 2 to the power of minus 1 like this. Now, if you have to simplify this part over here, it will give us this answer. So let's go through this. The first term remains 2 to the power of n. The second term, nc1 factorial and nc1 factorial is now cancelled, leaving us with an n. 2 to the power of n minus 3 remains. Negative x for the negative, I put it right in front in this case. So multiply by an x plus n times n minus 1 remains and the n minus 2 factorial to the top and bottom can be cancelled out. So n times n minus 1 remains. Over here, if I combine the powers of 2 here, so uh, 2 to the power of n minus 7, like this, and x squared remains. Let's not forget to do a plus 3 dots. Now, it is worth noting that um, to simplify the answers, we must combine all the bases of 2 in this case. All right, and that's the answer for B part 1 of this question. For the last part of this question, we are told that the first two non-zero terms, now as you can see here, they are very deliberate with their um, wording. It says non-zero terms. That means there could be a zero term. And um, in this expansion of 2 plus x multiplied by this part here, 2 minus x over 4 to the power of n, I believe this is from your b part 1. All right, and it is given to be a, a plus bx squared. Once again, this is something weird because um, over here, a is a constant. Um, they skipped the term consisting of x, they went on to bx squared. So um, these two combinations, I would like to think of it as um, there is an x term, but the x term is a zero term, which means to say they left out the zero x. So this is the uh, thing that we have to know. And um, the third part here, it says to find the values of n of a and of b. So if you are given two terms, a constant and an x squared, it's not possible to find um, three unknowns. To find three unknowns, we need to have three equations in general. So to have three equations, I want to have uh, an equation comparing um, constants, second equation comparing an x in the middle, third equation comparing an x squared. So that is the general idea for solving this B part 2 solutions. So for B part 2, in our first step, we will want to rewrite the expression of 2 plus x and this. So 2 plus x can be written as a 2 plus 1 over x. So x is the same as 1x. Um, the reason why I write it as 1x is for clarity or presentation purposes later on. And over here, um, 2 minus x over 4 to the power of n. This is from a b part 1. So I uh, copied the b part 1 solutions. And on the right, you're going to set it to be equal to a plus 0x. So the 0x refers to the second term, also the 0 term here. 
plus a BX square plus a triple dot indicating a series of turns from behind. So um, the very first step is to compare X is because zero is always a very good way to start a question or it's the easiest to uh, manipulate as well. So let's compare X. So comparing coefficient of X rather, comparing coefficient of X on the right, we have a zero. And on the left, we want to ask ourselves, how do we get an X out of this? So to get an X out of this, we must have a constant multiplied by X, which is the yellow multiplied by greens, plus an X multiplied by a constant, which is the blue multiplied by the peach color in this case. So the combination of this will give us a zero, setting this to be a zero. And as we can see here, there's a two to the power of n here. There's also another two to the power of n. We want to factor out two to the power of n. Factoring out two to the power of n, um, the first term within the parentheses, we have a minus 2n multiplied by uh, 2 to the power of minus 3 from here, plus a 1, because there's a 1 here. So that's the purpose of having a 1 there. All right. And you set it to be equal to 0. So 2 to the power of n um, is definitely not equal to 0, because 2 to the power of n is actually um, greater than 0 based on the exponential graph. And setting this part here to be equal to 0 and solving for n, that's simple it should give us a 4, n to be a 4. So that's the value of n. Going on to the next part, we want to find the value of a. And a is just a constant over here. a is just a constant. So uh, the step two of this is we will want to compare constants. So by comparing constants, we have this. On the, on the right, in this case, we have an a. On the left, to get a constant up, we need to get a constant multiplied by a constant. So um, 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of n. So since n is a 4, this will actually be 2 to the power of 5, giving us a 32. a is a 32. And moving on to finding the value of b. So the b is embedded within the bx square here. So I want to compare the coefficients of x square in the next step. So comparing coefficient of x square on the right should give us a b. On the left, we ask ourselves, how do we get an x square out of this? To get an x square out of this, we need to take a constant, multiply by an x square like this, plus an x, multiply by an x in here. We also get an x square from here, like this. So because we are writing the coefficients, we ignore all the x's and therefore forming the equation, solving for b and replacing n to be a 4. We can key into our calculator and getting the answer of b to be a negative 5. And so your answers for this question, n to be a 4, a to be a 32, and b to be a negative 5. And that's the answer for b part 2.